Hi authors, my name is Jennifer Carr and I'm here to help you build more realistic characters with psychology. As both a marriage and family counselor and a former high school AP psychology teacher, I have insider information that can help you write better stories and more relatable characters. Did you know that on average 80% of all communication is nonverbal? That means 80% of all information being communicated includes zero words. Those wordless conveyances reveal who a person is in ways they may not even realize they're communicating. And why does this matter? Because these expressions convey emotions. And when you're writing a story, you have to draw on your reader's emotions in order to hook them very early on, then hold their attention for the remainder of your story. You might be familiar with some fairly obvious forms of nonverbal communication, like hand gestures, facial expressions, or what a person's eyes are doing. But have you considered that someone's posture, their handshake, even their hairstyle communicates something about them? That's why when you're creating a character for your story, it's important that you take into consideration details such as how they behave in different environments, with different people, when they're in different moods, etc. Everyone communicates non-verbally in some form or fashion, and when they do, it's typically consistent across the board. That, however, does not mean they behave or communicate exactly the same with every person they encounter. Imagine yourself in two different scenarios. In one, you're meeting your potential future boss. In the other, you're meeting up with your best friend at the bowling alley. Consider the greeting you offer each of them. While you may greet your friend with a hand slap, one-armed hug, clap on the back, your future employer would most likely not appreciate that same gesture. Instead, you would extend a firm, confident hand and close your hand around his briefly but securely before withdrawing. My point is, as you're developing your character, you need to know as much about him or her as you possibly can before putting them on paper. I have another quick talk about creating a character profile in this series, and over on my website, jcarwrites.com, there's a resource you can use to help you keep track of your characters as you write, so feel free to check that out. Now, back to the topic at hand. Nonverbal cues, or the way you listen, look, move, and react, they play multiple roles in communication. It can repeat or strengthen whatever message is being spoken. It can contradict whatever words are being spoken. It can take the place of spoken words entirely. It can complement whatever message is being conveyed, such as a pat on the back in addition to words of praise. Or it can accent or add emphasis to a message, such as when a character slams his or her hand down on a table while raising their voice. When nonverbal signals match up with the words being spoken, they increase trust, clarity, and understanding. When they don't, they can generate tension, mistrust, and confusion. As you're writing, know which message your character is trying to convey, determine his or her motives for presenting this message, and decide if their words and actions will match or if one will betray the other. Whichever you decide, be sure to keep it consistent with your character's identity and the plot of your story in order to allow it to drive the story forward. The most common form of nonverbal communication is, of course, facial expressions. A person's face is usually the first thing you see before they say anything. And what's really interesting is that there are six universal emotions that people express, which means while behaviors may vary between cultures, these facial expressions are similar throughout the world. These include happiness, sadness, anger, disgust, surprise, and fear. Research has shown that the expressions that accompany these emotions are understood globally. That being said, culture does impact the expression of emotions, so be sure to do your research on emotional display rules before developing your character. When you write, consider your character's body language. Are they approachable, or is it obvious they do not want to be approached? And what does that look like? Someone that doesn't mind being approached will have more open features. They'll make eye contact. They'll have a genuine smile. They may raise their eyebrows their arms are not going to create a barrier in front of them. An unapproachable person will make it clear by barricading him or herself with their arms crossed in front of them. They may offer up a scowl. They may stare down at the ground. There will be indicators that may as well be a flashing sign reading do not approach or approach with caution. As you develop your characters, consider all of the ways he or she will communicate without ever saying anything. This will also help you as you write dialogue between your characters, back up their words with action, or give the reader reasons to doubt or be suspicious about your character. You can use your character's body language to toy with your reader's emotions, so use it to your advantage. So how do you learn more about body language? Well, I highly recommend spending time watching people when you interact with them. Watch how other people interact with each other. Take your own body language into consideration when you're talking to someone and note what you do when you communicate without words. There's a great book I love to utilize when I get stuck called The Emotion Thesaurus by Angela Ackerman and Becca Puglisi that I highly recommend having on hand as a resource. 
Also, create a character profile for each of your characters to keep them consistent as you write and develop them. Habits, gestures, tics, mannerisms, all of these things are part of your character's identity, and the more thoroughly you know your character, the more realistic and relatable they will be on the page. Want to learn more about using psychology to help you become a better writer? Click that follow button. Have specific questions about using psychology to write better characters? Leave a comment below and I'll get to it as soon as I can.